Bill Simmons, Ethers, Pat McAfee. Because this is hilarious. We're going to come back. So take a listen to that uh, sound bite there. All right, third. So this is a quick one, but have you noticed how with sports ratings, everybody's sports ratings are up on TV? Like we just had the Super Bowl came out. It was the most watched Super Bowl ever. 123 million. It's like, man, that that seems weird because I thought people under 25 were on TikTok and on YouTube and uh, on Snapchat and on all the streaming services. You have so many more TV choices. Why would the ratings go up? And then you see like ESPN, they do at the end of the year or the end of the month, be like highest ratings ever for Get Up and all these different shows. Same for Fox. All their shows are up. Everybody's ratings are basically up except for the NBA and whoever replaced the 12 p.m. Sports Center. Well, That's McAfee's so created a new version of how to do this. Uh-oh. Yeah. Why uh-oh? I don't know. Well, we're not allowed to talk about Pat McAfee. Let's do it. I don't know. He starts the show and it'd be like, Cowboys, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> What's going on there, bro? And then it cuts to his three people. Right. And then they'll be like, well, I don't know. And then they'll go back to him and say, it's not good, bro. Not right. good. Not keep an eye on that, bro. Yeah. Two of them are looking to take their first cigarette break. <laughs> <laughs> and then McAfee's just uh, going to. We don't have a rundown. Well, you see there. That's that's Cousin Sal. That's Bill Simmons' Cousin Sal. He really He's kind of surprised that Bill Simmons for jumping, for jumping the gun like that and talking about uh, Pat McAfee that way to mention his name and everything, but I'm gonna give you the reason why he did that, bro. <laughs> no rundown on the show, bro. Duke's a hazard lot. I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, Mike McCarthy. It's not looking good for him, bro. It's not looking good. Not looking good for that guy, bro. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. I don't. I would be really hard to do this podcast with seven people staring. Right. But then you have to, how do you include the seven people? It is tough. Yeah. <laughs> you just, yeah. it is tough. You'd be I, like, oh, I didn't, I didn't get to Bobby yet. Right. I felt a little better about uh, bouncing stuff off of Harry after watching some of uh, that show this week. Jordan Love. I don't know, bro. <laughs> that guy's good. He's what just good, you know? bro. He's just good. Uh huh. He's uh-huh. good, bro. Yep. 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 It's good. The guy can sling it. He's uh-huh. good. Um, that's our only line. So here's the schedule. But then Dream was pro. He look, he plays what Pat McAfee said in response to those Simmons. Uh, I think one of their parlays on Fanduel had like sixty thousand people riding alongside mm-hmm. of him. Pretty good. I think Bill Simmons, who has it all figured out, yep, I think yeah. he had like eight thousand yep, people yeah. riding yep. alongside yep. of him. Like eight three hundred, I think. Did that's a hit. huge number. Yeah, yeah it did not hit. That's so. really big. Really good, Bill. You still have it. <laughs> I, mean, I think we had 250,000 yep. people or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Keep oh. running your mouth, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Keep running your mouth. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, Chiefs. So you heard uh, what Pat McAfee had. And, you know, you heard what uh, Dreamers Pro had to say. Shout out to Dreamers Pro. He's been killing the game. Uh, definitely showing everyone how to do it on, on, the, on the YouTube it, uh, streets. Um, but he, he, he was saying he got into how, you know, Pat McAfee – is now signed with ESPN and and he's not independent anymore and Bill Simmons is and you know they, a, a part of it does play into that argument about well somebody being independent and 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 of course what stands out about being independent at, at this stage is you know Aaron Rodgers being on the Pat McAfee show and the reason why that that's significant is because when Pat McAfee was on YouTube, still on YouTube with a, a simulcast on ESPN, but Pat McAfee wouldn't have had to worry about anybody coming after him on YouTube. So people think he thinks that people think that because he was, if he was stayed on YouTube, he wouldn't have to worry about any of this. And and Aaron Rodgers with the vaccine and all the political stuff that came along with that, um, people think that they wouldn't have kicked off Pat McAfee of YouTube. And that's not true because during the pandemic, a lot of things happen and you Google and YouTube have their own rules and regulations. So Pat McAfee was not safe just because he, he would have been on YouTube. The second thing is. The reason why Bill Simmons said all of this, in case any of you don't know or forgot. Let's not forget. Bill Simmons, before he worked for ESPN. He worked for Jimmy Kimmel. Interesting, right? 
The Ringer found that Bill Simmons worked for Jimmy Kimmel in 2003 and spent over a decade at ESPN after that, right? Jimmy Kimmel would, would go on from time to time. Uh, Adam Carolla, has a, Bill Simmons has a great relationship with Adam Carolla. You know, that's the major re that's the reason, in my opinion, why Bill Simmons jumped out the window and was was mentioning Pat McAfee by name. To me, this isn't unfamiliar territory for Bill Simmons, right? Bill Simmons is from where? He's from Boston, right? What other big time company or organization, sports company, sports media company, comes from Boston or the Boston area? Barstool. Bing. Right? Who's the owner of Barstool? Dave Portnoy. You ever notice? You don't see any, you never see Bill Simmons or Dave Portnoy together in the room together. Ever. There is no footage of them together. I couldn't find any. You can't find any. They got a beef going on. You guys came up at the same exact time from the same exact area and don't do any content together whatsoever. You your your brands are that off. Something's going on with like these guys always beefing with each other, and the only people that get looked down upon each other is like the other podcasters. That's why I don't like what Steve Harvey said when he said to Shannon Sharp and when Cat the Cat Williams thing blew up, Steve Harvey came out and said, We're the only ones that bring each other down. No, this is the YouTube world. These guys are all now drill rappers. I keep telling y'all, the YouTube game right now reminds me of the early 2000s when the mixtapes came out. And 50 Cent came out, came about that. Eminem came about out of all that. That was the early trolling. But you had not beef, but you had a lot of competition. Eminem was like 50 Cent before 50 Cent for the pop world. He was going at Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, all these people. The point is, they were all really beefing with each other. And that's what you have here in the mainstream world. So Cat Williams and these guys, they looked at as more hip-hop and more, more darker <laughs> in the room. But what was going on with Shannon Sharp and Mike Epps and these dudes, and even Shannon Sharp and Matt versus Matt Barnes and Steve Jackson and them guys, this is a natural order of things when you talk about the podcast world because there's a lot of talking going on and a lot of competition, especially when there's this much money on the line. We're talking about Bill Simmons. What is that? Nine figure, a nine-figure deal with Spotify, right? And Pat McAfee, close to it, he turned down a nine-figure nine figure deal from FanDuel, gets out of that contract to sign an eight-figure deal with ESPN. So you, you get a guaranteed $85 billion from ESPN, and you opt out of your nine-figure deal from FanDuel. But we got to be honest about that. Bill Simmons sounds like a hater because, and that's my guy, Bill Simmons is an OG to the podcast game, to the sports media independent game, right? I love him. But you sound like a damn hater because Pat McAfee with his bro talking all that, he made it. And he got a big chunk of whatever you got from Spotify. Mind you, he's not running a, a crazy organization company. The Ringer is a big-time organization. The Ringer is something that I have aspirations of trying to pull off. Something like that to, like, a baby ESPN. But that's a lot of work. That's a big-time corporation, it sounds like. Pat McAfee showing up to talk live for two hours. And he's still himself. Does he have to go through some things? So get some curvature? Of course. Yo, you can't talk about this. You can't talk about that. But I've never seen anybody on ESPN in my life cursing at 12 o'clock midday ever in my life until Pat McAfee got there with his tank top on. So I don't know how why Bill Simmons looks at it as a downgrade. You're looking at the ratings and everything and look, looks at it like it's crazy. But ESPN is also working on YouTube content only. ESPN is looking at making YouTube content only. Look it up. And if that's the case, they already have Shannon Sharp. Now they got, and they already have Pat McAfee. Stephen A. Smith is trying to make his his way into the ESP into the YouTube streets. Those are three big names that pop up in all the sports media algorithms. If they're attached to Club Shay Shay and Shannon Sharp, Pat McAfee and Stephen A. Smith, it won't be hard for YouTube and Disney to keep continuing whatever it is that they want to do. So, if Pat McAfee to turn down hundred million dollars and take the ESPN thing. Why would he do that? In my opinion, it sounds like the FanDuel deal 
wasn't a hundred percent guaranteed nine-figure deal. It couldn't have been because there's no way I'm sitting there with a hundred million guaranteed and I'm gonna go get go for the 85 guaranteed. No way possible. No way possible that 85 of that 100 million was guaranteed either from FanDuel. That's my opinion. I could be wrong, but put yourself in Pat McAfee's shoes. Why would I turn down 100 million, go for the 85? It sounds like I got to work a little bit harder and be incentivized to get the 100 million dollars. I got to do X, Y, Z, and then I could get the 100 million dollars. Right? So that means without the incentives, where am I? I would think it's a ballpark below 85. So if I could take the same risk with the Aaron Rodgers, let's say, Aaron Rodgers is there. If that risk takes place on YouTube, the same thing that happened during the pandemic, they could shut you down. During the pandemic, this is what happened. They shut a lot of YouTube channels down. Pat McAfee sitting down there going, well, if I get shut down, the worst that could happen to me with ESPN and the corporation is they tell me to never bring them back again, especially if you guaranteed me 85 and all I get is a slap on the wrist, but I keep my channel up there and you guys are going to back me. Bill Simmons has also been like on, on, on Bloomberg media and I've never used to see, you know, he used to talk all this talk. He's never really been a guy that, that has shown his face like that, especially outside of the ringer. What do these things mean? Well, but this is the Bill Simmons Spotify deal. Uh, Spotify will pay Bill Simmons as much as $196 million to acquire The Ringer in a deal that will instantly boost the streaming services sports pop culture company and bring a high-powered name to his roster of podcasting content. Remember, this is after the $250 that, 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 that Spotify just gave Joe Rogan. So, I'm sorry, whatever the amount was that they gave Joe Rogan, that was back then because this article was from... I want to say at least five years ago or oh, three years ago. So this is, this is three years ago to the date. February 12th. Even more interesting. Okay. The Stockholm-based company said in a regulatory filing on Wednesday that they will pay Bill Simmons between 130 million euros and 180 million euros with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The deal is expected to close first quarter of 2020. Spotify announced the, the deal last week amid speculation that it could be valued at $250 million. And of course, they have the Bill Simmons podcast, the Rewatchables, and Ryan Russillo's podcast. Shout out to Ryan Russillo. I love his work too. But look at this. Bill Simmons ripped the Royals for ending their Spotify deal, right? So he, he was talking about the Royal family. The Ringer found the Spotify executive used his podcast to blast Harry and Meghan, calling them grifters. Griff is another popular term that people are using now. How Spotify's podcast bet went wrong. Semaphore.com. 2021, Spotify had paid to sign some of the biggest names in podcasting. It was ready to start squeezing. Uh, Spotify chief content creator Don Ostroff, a TV veteran from Gossip Girl, uh, ready to make styles. They're going against Apple and Amazon, basically, right? Then Bill Simmons sent an email to her boss. Ooh, Bill Simmons again. Interesting. Simmons had the sport sold the sports and pop culture audio empire. He sold it. So it's not it's not licensed. He sold it to Spotify. Right. So he basically he's not doing what Pat McAfee did. Pat McAfee, if I'm not mistaken, he licensed his his uh his company, Pat McAfee to ESPN. Because if he didn't, that'd be crazy. We'll look that up in a second. Bill Simmons sold his company to Spotify, right? For the $200 million, around $200 million. We saw 180 Simmons won the argument, but that 2021 dispute exposed deep questions about the strategy behind Spotify's billion-dollar bet on podcasting. In January, Spotify pushed out Ostroff and canceled nearly a dozen shows at its highest-profile podcast investment, the studio Gimlet. Podcasting was a big drag on our business in 2022. In hindsight, I probably got a little carried away and overinvested relative to the uncertainty we saw shaping in the market. Eck said on earnings call in January. Yeah, Daniel Eck is the C Spotify CEO. So he felt like they were very premature on their deals. Spotify's podcast push began in earnest in, two, in 2016 when Eck invited, invited audio executives, higher-ups at Gimlet to the company's headquarters in Stockholm. The massive success of the serial 
uh, podcast in 2014 set up for gold Russian audio. Yeah, a lot of the biggest audio stuff out there is uh um what, how you how you say serial is like the like the crime stories. Like, and that's another thing. We've been telling how many crime stories in hip hop. A lot of these things might have to be remade in this form. Like right now, you see the Griselda story on Netflix. That's a big deal. Imagine all they got at that company or them the family for Griselda, they sued. Sofia Vergara, which is kind of crazy. But all she got to do is pull him to the side and say, hey, I know you're looking for some money, looking for some bread. I could take you to Spotify. You do a, a podcast deal and you could tell the story in 10 different audio, you know, audio uh, episodes instead of going on Vlad TV. Vlad TV is going to pay you but so much. You won't get any residuals. And you could still do that while promoting something like this. That's how big the podcast audio space is. And really... Serial is the thing I forgot. This is what took podcasting to another level because even Joe Rogan really wasn't quite Joe Rogan what he is today until this and until he went kind of political. But this serial, you know, crime thing, the crime podcasting, the crime audio telling, uh, storytelling of news that's what set off the podcast world. Spotify was spent a, high, a year hiring executives. Early 2019, the company eventually settled on what it, it saw as three complementary companies. Gimlet, blah, 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 to head the division 2018. Now, let's get to the ringer. Spotify purchased the ringer in 2020, forked over huge cash for deals with Alex Cooper, the co-host of Call Her Daddy. Right. Joe Rogan and... I was on part of Has someone cool finally become the biggest hit in podcasting since Serial? See? They're saying had somewhat co-foundingly become the biggest hit since Serial. Serial is different because Serial was like Serial was like the Michael Jackson of, of podcasting. They just that story they had with I think it was name is Adon or something like that, where it was basically like a true crime story where, you know, um the 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 guy who was accused of of killing who um killing a young lady was falsely accused. And they used, if I'm not mistaken, they used the, um, that podcast to try to free the guy. He was locked up for over 10 years. The acquisition set alarm, blah, 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 Ostroff. She appeared to deliver on the promise Spotify signed deals with. Right, so they're talking about here about um, how Spotify is signing a whole bunch of people, A-listers, and trying to bring, they try to make it a commer go the commercial route, right? They try to make this an expendables version of of podcasting world so you know podcasting was really organic with joe how joe rogan started pack um uh, adam carolla never gets any credit adam carolla is an og to this game he used to do live podcasting and just upload his stuff um those are all done organically though bill burr is a is a podcasting og og to the podcast game with, with the monday morning uh with the monday morning football whatever you call it, monday morning podcast or whatever but their following was built organically. For you to throw in there Kim Kardashian and Michelle Obama, it went against the whole the whole point of podcasting because we already know that they're these people. Kim Kardashian, come on, and Obama, you can't get more Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, you can't get more cookie cutter than that. That's baked in a factory, and then they come out when they're prepared. Podcasting is straight raw like this. This is why podcasting is the greatest thing ever in, in media. Because you get to hear what I say. I get to respond to your comments. Kim Kardashian ain't doing that. Obama ain't doing that. Meghan Markle ain't doing that. Meghan Markle does not want to read them comments out loud, especially if they're from England. Come on now, right? Bill Simmons knows this. Surprisingly, Bill Simmons knew, knows this. Why the hell would he even suggest that, that Spotify do something like this? I guess because they come from, remember, he worked for Jimmy Kimmel. They work in the Hollywood world, and you tend to forget when you get lost in there, you know, these big names, at the very least, that you can bring, you can pull their audience over. But the podcast, podcasting world is more real than this. You got to be more, you know, let your hair loose.